some of you were asking for a tutorial on how to bring bootloader and upload your sketch to the AT Mega 328P AU which is the solder mount packet of the AT Mega 328P chip. Uh, first of all you're going to require a TQFP 32 pin socket. This converts the chip to a DIP32 so we can access the pins a lot easier so the chip doesn't actually have to be soldered onto a board for us to work on it. First of all you'll see here there's a little dip on the top left corner of the chip. This indicates the first pin and then going anti-clockwise the pins increase numerically to pin 32. We're going to place this chip. That first pin is as seen here uh, pointing to the top left so we have pins 1 through 16 increasing downwards and then on the opposite side we have from pin 17 increasing upwards to pin 32. I'm going to flip the socket over so I can access the uh, the pins a lot easier. I'm also going to secure it with some glue tack so that it's not moving around all over the place. Firstly I'm just going to go ahead and bridge the two power rails of my breadboard so that I have power either side so like some cleaner connections. Next I'm going to connect pin 3 to ground, pin 4 to 5 volts or VCC, pin 5 to ground and pin 6 also to 5 volts or VCC. Next is pin 7 and 8 which get connected to either side of the 60 megahertz crystal. Uh, this is required to keep the internal clock of the microchip working as intended. We're also going to need some two 22 picofarad ceramic capacitors either side of the crystal and I like to connect the middle one together so that it's easier to connect both to ground. So you want to connect uh, the 22 picofarad capacitors either side of the crystal and then you want to ground them. Afterwards we'll connect pin 18 uh, directly to 5 volt. Next we'll connect a 47 micro farad capacitor to the breadboard. It's, it's positive terminal. That's the long leg or the side opposite the grey bar to 5 volts. Next we will connect pin 20 to that capacitor in series. After which we will then connect pin 21 to ground. And then we will connect pin 29 to 5 volts through a 1k ohm resistor. Just like I show you here. It's quite important. And now we will add our Arduino to the breadboard and connect the respective pins to the pins on pins 12 and 11 on the Arduino will go to pin 16 and 15 respectively on our chip. Uh, next we'll connect pin 10 in series with pin 29 which is already on our breadboard so we'll just place it here. Uh, finally pin 13 will go to pin 17 on our chip. Next we'll connect our Arduino to our PC. One last thing we'll just connect uh, 5 volts and ground respectively to our power rails. So when you open the Arduino IDE, yours won't look exactly like mine. First of all, you'll have to go to preferences and then paste the link into the box shown. I'll have the link below. This is required to help us burn the bootloader and also upload the sketch. Uh, it's quite important later on. Next, we'll go to tools and select our board, which in this case is the 80 Mega uh, True 28. We will then make sure we have the correct port selected. We will go to file example Arduino ISP. Then we will upload this uh, script or code to our Arduino first of all. And then we will go back to tools. We will change our programmer to Arduino as ISP and then select burn bootloader. If for any chance you get an error like you see on screen now, just go over your cables, make sure they are connected securely, they're in the correct place, you have everything that should be connected, connected, and then just try again. And uh, you should see a success like this. 
and your Arduino during the should flash uh, rapidly a few times. Now we're going to disconnect the Arduino completely. One key thing to note is to remove the resistor between pin 29 and 5 volts. This is important for when we're uploading our sketch. Next we'll add the FTDI module, uh, USB to serial, to our board. And between the DT or pin, we will put a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Connect this to pin 29, which of course is already on our breadboard. We'll just connect it straight to uh, to that point. So our DTR pin goes to our pin 29, which we already have on the breadboard. Next, we'll connect our TX and RX pins to pin 30 and 31 respectively. And finally, we will connect 5 volts and ground to our power rail. We'll just add in a little LED circuit to begin with, so we'll have a resistor going to ground, we'll have our LED, it's negative terminal, short leg, connected to our resistor in series, and then we'll connect the wire from pin 17, which is a digital pin 13 on our chip, and connect it to the positive terminal of our LED. Connect the FTDI module to our computer, and we'll get an idea that it is connected correctly because when you add the FTDI module uh, the LED should blink a few times in a kind of systematic fashion. Once this happens we'll hop over back into the Arduino IDE, we'll take our sketch that we want to upload, we'll paste it in, I'll link to where you can find this one. Then we'll go to tools, we'll make sure that all our settings are correct as you see here, we have the correct COM selected and we will change to USB as ISP and then we will hit upload. Now the key thing here is that once it is done compiling, quickly remove our pin from DTOR. From my understanding, this causes the board to enter a high state or maybe vice versa, so that the FTDI module can communicate with the chip itself. It helps to reset the board. And just to confirm that our code has been uploaded successfully, I've removed all of the uh, FTDI module connections to show that it is just the essentials of the 18 mega chip, the 47 microfarad capacitor, the 22 picofarad capacitors, the 16 megahertz crystal, just the core essentials of the 18 mega chip. And as you can see, our code works without any issues. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope it was informative and helps you guys out. Uh, if you like, I suppose, subscribe, maybe or like the video. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, or I skipped over anything, Please don't hesitate to leave a comment and I'll try help to the best of my ability.